just about everything. So if you have a question about any of his projects, there's a microphone right there, right next to that blue-shirted gentleman. You can uh, feel free to start getting in line right now. Ask a question. We're going to try to get through as many as we can over the next 40 minutes or so. And if at any point you're entertained by what you're hearing on stage, make sure to use the hashtag ConLife, hashtag ConLife on any of the social media sites, and uh, we may retweet you out to uh, all of our many, many followers. So uh, keep that in mind. With that said, I have to use notes to try to keep up with all of his many different projects. Star Trek Generations, Franklin and Bash, Tank Girl, Heroes, The Mentalist, Phineas and Ferb, a countless amount of video games and cartoons, a countless amount of sci-fi and horror films, including a legendary film called The Clockwork Orange. <laughs> they're, they're, they're coming, I promise. They're coming. And there's a lot to do around the con. Have you made it to the show floor? Yeah, but this is a nice theater, isn't it? This is an incredible theater. That's why I said, where are we? <laughs> I just came in the back door. I had no idea there were seats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> seats upon seats upon seats. Well, uh, happy early Father's Day to you. Oh, thank you. You thank have you. What, five children? At least. At least. <laughs> <laughs> That he's aware of, anyway. Any any plans for tomorrow? Well, um, I'll see my children tomorrow night, so uh, we'll go have fun. I'll probably barbecue something in the garden. Wait, so you have to barbecue something. Isn't it your day tomorrow that you just sit back and relax? But you know, my kids are fairly young, so oh, okay. it's <laughs> dad, you do it. <laughs> As that makes sense. And of course, if you're going to be here tomorrow, you you here at the show tomorrow? I'm here in the early. Okay. I'm leaving in the afternoon. Well, a great father's day gift for your father would be a picture with Malcolm McDowell, right? Nice. Right? Yeah! Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, well, we, uh, we don't have a line yet, but we have a very brave young individual that wants to ask a question. Hello, how are you? <laughs> the mic is too tall. Hello, what's your name? I'm Riley. Hi. Got a question? Yes. In one of the episodes of Star Trek, how did you feel about killing Captain Kirk? <laughs> straight to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Let's not screw around here. It was a thrill for me to get rid of that old boring twit. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm a friend of William Shatner, and I adore him, and I think he's a very amusing guy. And actually, I love to tease him, but as he says, yeah, well, you shot me in the back. <laughs> it's uh, rather sad. I've always uh, thought that uh, the producers felt it was a fitting end for Captain T. James T. Kirk to uh, go in such a simplistic way. I think he should have gone into the you know, galaxies or whatever and gone in some grand way. But hey, I guess the other side of that is that, you know, he's a simple hero and uh, a simple hero's death is what he got. So. Anyway, it was fun working with him and Patrick, who uh, I'd known for many, many years. I was at Stratford-on-Avon, the Royal Shakespeare Company, with Patrick in 1965. Yeah, exactly. We are that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, William Shatner, considered to be an inspiration to, to many people, aspiring yeah. actors, Patrick Stewart, of course, and many others. Uh, who on set maybe has inspired you to be uh, maybe better? Maybe somebody has even unintentionally helped you inspire your game, up your game a little bit. Well, I think when you work with great actors, you uh, you have to bring your A game. And uh, you and I have been very fortunate to work with some of the greats 
Olivier Gilgood, Richardson, um, you know, they are the three great ones, the three great knights of the English theatre, and uh, especially uh, Laurence Olivier, you know, was just an amazing actor. But Ian Holm at the Royal Shakespeare Company was a great inspiration for young actors as, my, as I was in those days. And, uh, he is amazing. I love David Warner, who's more of a contemporary of mine, but a uh, wonderful actor. And um, he made some very interesting early movies. Morgan, A Suitable Case for Treatment. He was in Tom Jones. Aldo Finney, of course, a great inspiration. He's a generation older than me. So Albert, we all looked up to because he's from the provinces, from the north of England, as I am. And um, I remember seeing him in a movie when I was a 17 year old and the movie was Saturday night and Sunday morning. And uh, if you know, in the darkness of the Odeon Cinema and Lime Street, Liverpool. And I just thought, I'm going to do that. And just to, to make the decision to get out of one's environment is such a huge thing, you know, it's, it's a great thing when you're that age, so um, I always say thank you to Albert for that. Excellent. Yes, sir. All right, um, so uh, I'm an aspiring like, filmmaker and director and all that, and you talked about like Albert Finney and Lawrence Levy and all those people, you know, the Shakespeare Company, um, but for me it was like growing up, it was watching you, and so first of all, I want to say thanks for that. Uh, you know, films like If and, you know, Clockwork Orange, you know, these are like ones I love. But more importantly than that, uh, I really want to know, what's it like being an inspiration to 14-year-old girls everywhere uh, with the Toast and the Goats line and, you know, the Sprint commercials and working with uh, James Earl Jones and uh, whatever else you said in that OMG. I'm not, I'm not aware of any 14-year-old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're their biggest hero, I promise. Oh, okay. Well, if you say so. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's funny because um, I guess I live in a bit of a bubble, you know, because I do my work. I'm extremely uh, happy and, and love to work, and uh, especially things like with James O. Jones, who is such a great as a man and uh, as an actor. And to work with him on doing these ads was fantastic. Um, by the way, I don't normally do, you know, on-camera ads, but um, I'm getting at the age now where um, I, I did a whole load of commercials and go on uh, YouTube and check them out for Lunchables. <laughs> I am the spokesperson from hell. Um, they say things to me, do you know what hashtag is? And I go, of course I know, hashtag. It's German for shoes. <laughs> Things like that. You know, so they are hilarious. And they're all uh, improv, basically. So uh, go on and, and check them out. They're really, I think, very funny. But, um, you know, so one does, getting back to your, answer your question. So you kind of just do your work as best as you possibly can and try and work with the best people. And then if people, the public, you, uh, like it, you know, I am thrilled, and, and often I think nobody's ever going to see this. And when I say that to myself, of course, it's hugely popular. So, <laughs> there you go. But um, it's funny, of course, when you're doing it, you don't think anybody's going to see it, you know, or at least you don't think that. Of course, when you work with a great director or a great star like Denzel Washington or something, you know everybody's going to see it. But, um, or I always think this will be the one that they don't like of his, and nobody will see it. <laughs> so, you know, that's it, how insecure actors really are. Anyway, does that, has that answered your question? I honestly don't even know if I really had a question. I just <laughs> why, why are you wearing all white? May I ask you that? I mean, I'm trying to dress like Alex the Large. I got the more of the outfit over there, but... Where is your eyelash? <laughs> Where I is your eyelash. bowler? The bowler hat's over there, uh, with the beautiful man with the uh, orange hats holding it. Oh, he's not your significant other? He wishes he was my significant other. 
Well, he looks fairly handsome to me. <laughs> well, because you're actually Really? Um, well, listen, it's very nice to talk Thank to you. you. Yeah, all the best. And you're no longer going to hang out with him after this, are you? <laughs> he just puts his hand on his face. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if you could, you were talking about a Royal Shakespeare Company, what is your favorite Shakespeare play and why, and I'm really hoping it's Henry V. <laughs> You're really hoping what? That it's Henry V. You've been reading the internet again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do love Henry V, because beside it being a beautiful play, um, it was the one play that I was in when I first joined the Royal Shakespeare Company as a very young man, and Ian Holm played Henry V, and he was, Ian Holm to me was apt, as a young actor watching, and I watched him from the wings every performance. I just thought that he was so magnificent, and such an inspiration to a, a young actor like as myself. I think I was 19 or 20 at the time. And uh, I love that play, but uh, listen, it's a play, it's a jing jingoistic play. It's a, you know, it's the kind of play that, uh, well, it's the kind of play that Olivier would do in World War II and rouse the troops. You know, that's what it's all about. Defeating the French. Sorry about that if you're French. <laughs> Incidentally, it's the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo. So the French are really getting it in the teeth this week. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, no, but um, I love Shakespeare's comedies. I, I love, um, who doesn't love A Midsummer Night's Dream? Uh, one of my favorite parts I ever played was Bottom the Weaver. Um, I love Taming of the Shrew. I think it's hilarious. and. Um, Romeo and Juliet, uh, fantastic. And the great tragedies, Lear, Macbeth. Ooh, shouldn't say the M word, but um, they're all brilliant. What can you say? How could one man write all this? Of course, there are people out there that are saying it was more than one man, but it's not. No way. No way. If you uh, read those plays, there's, there's only one man that wrote that. Who the hell he was, I don't know because they know absolutely nothing about William Shakespeare except where he was born and where he died and knew he married that day. But, um, you know, they recently found the foundations of the Globe Theatre in London. Um, they were excavating for a bank, of course, would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> in the city of London and came across the foundations of the original Globe Theatre. That was pretty exciting, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. And, uh, it's quite magnificent. But Shakespeare, uh, to all actors, and, and by the way, all young actors uh, should read it because um, I know it's difficult, the language, when you start, but you persevere with it, and suddenly you get into a, a rhythm to the, the stuff, and, and it's really incredible language. I know a lot of it you don't understand, but actually, uh, reading it, you will get pick it up. It'll uh, become familiar to you. And it really is something. I know I hated doing Shakespeare in school, just the, the, read, the reading in class. I loved acting it. I played all the great parts when I was at school, you know. Um, but uh, I didn't really like learning it as a lesson, because one was meant to learn it as, you know, as, sort of like a parrot, and, and uh, but reading it, I love it. I'm going to see productions, go see it. That would be my advice. Go see it, you know, because it won't be around uh, very much because it's so unpopular, I guess. Of course, it's not the case in London, but uh, here, if you can go to see a production of Shakespeare, go. That's my advice. Thank you. Pleasure.